Good morning, friends of the interwebs. It is I, your mostly fearless leader, Nicola Moraz, here to help you with your business, your content, your social media, your visibility, and most of all, you having fun in your business. So welcome to the Coffee Run, episode 422. Today on this very freaking cold, but very beautiful and very sunny day here in the land of Mildura. So what I wanted to talk with you about today are some things that I think are really important. And I mean, I think everything that I talk about is important, but it's, it's a really interesting one. So when we start out our businesses, I think we tend to do everything, right? I know for me, when I first started out in business, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to try? Hi, Fabian. Thank you. You too. What am I going to try? And I was kind of at the point where it's like, you know, screw it. I'm just going to give anything and everything a go because I don't know what will work. I don't know what won't work. I, you know, I, I listened to people. I had mentors and, you know, I was learning. Good morning, Jeanette. And it was kind of like, you know, I remember just this feeling of, of being really excited at being able to experiment. And, and I think, you know, I think back to 2010, when I started this business, I was playing around with Facebook and, and using Facebook to get clients, not from advertising, but from posting and interacting and, and things like that. And, you know, really trying to build up my clientele. And I was willing to kind of do crazy hours. I was willing to sit and absorb and watch training after training, after training, after training, Googling after Googling. Because I was, I was willing to put in the hard yards. Hey, Georgina, good to see you. And, and I think for me, over the years, what kind of developed was I, I learned um, way back when I learned about discovery sessions. I learned about uh, putting up posts that would you know, make people respond, essentially. And that was how I started. So go back to two, like rewind all the way back to 2010, putting posts up, running discovery sessions, which for those of you that aren't aware, they're sales calls. I didn't, I remember not really kind of, you know, putting those two things together, even though it sounds really, you know, kind of obvious. It's like, hey, you know, if you want this, if you want this, and if you want this, let's hop on the phone. We'll have a half hour discovery session. And, you know, if I can help you, I will. And if I can't, then I won't. That was kind of the tone, or at least you push you in, like send you in the right way to to go, you know, not necessarily with me. And that that way of doing things, I, I just kind of winged it. Um, I was doing lots of these calls. I was getting clients, not at the volume that I wanted because I was unwilling to spend money on advertising back then. We were running, like I was running on the smell of an oily rag, had very little money to spend on, on anything actually. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of money in the household. And then I, in 2011, I left my job and I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm all in, but you know, barely keeping my eyes above financial water. It was pretty fucking stressful actually. And so I was at that point where I felt like I didn't have a whole lot of choice. No, I felt like the way that I had to grow and build my business was, was doing this. The way I had to market was doing this. Fast forward through to 2012, I finally worked out the, the secret to making things work. I nutted out how to do Facebook ads I, I, and get them converting it at a really, at a really great rate. I was out of time, you know, so I'd completely booked out myself with back-to-back one-on-one clients. So through the weeks, I was like busy, 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 busy. The weekends were insane. I was working early, I was working late, and I was like, this is not freaking sustainable. I wanna grow the business, but I'd created about $120,000 a year income ceiling for myself because everything was done. There was a lot of one-on-one delivery. It's like, man, okay, so that's not going to work. So, you know, if I, if I do want to be able to, and I see the potential of doing even quarter of a million a year or half a million a year or a million dollars a year, and it's like, man, you know, there's got to be a better way. And so I started researching and, and listening and watching and, and following and seeing what other people were doing. And I started creating online programs, even though my one-on-one had a com- combo of online stuff. Really, at the end of 2012, I was like, right, online program, I'll I'll start delivering over eight weeks and deliver the training through modules and and things like that. And that was really awesome. 
while I, while I was doing that. It was really, really great. Clients got great results from it. We had people making tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, hey, Angela. It was really, really fun until it wasn't. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, the way that I was getting people enrolled at that point, I was running webinars. I was running ads that were offering people into discovery sessions, uh, sales calls. And it got to the point where I was literally dialing around, oh golly, uh, there was anywhere between 50 and 80 phone numbers that I would be dialing a day. So this is in 2012, 2013, dialing all of these people and spending all day long either on the phone trying to get in touch with people, on the phone making sales calls, which I actually love. Like I love and I and I, I loved and I still love talking to you guys, you know, and if I can see a way to help you, then, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about my sales process. I fucking love it. What I was not passionate about was dialing 80 people a day to get through to 40 people, to have the half of the people say, yep, I can't talk to you right now, to have perhaps like five conversations with people a day and to make one or two sales a day. Sounds, you know, awful, I know. But it was it was that kind of thing where it was just so it was a lot of pressure, it was a lot of fun while it was fun, but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily the way that I wanted to keep growing and building. And so the advice that I was given was to build team, right? So get a salesperson on, uh, which worked really well. I hired my dad full time. He's amazing. He's like, like I know that some of you have had, have actually been on the phone with him and, and become a client because of him. You know, he's a total, total badass. He's amazing. Um, but I had him and then he was flat out busy. And then, so I built up this, like I built up a bigger team. I had, I had to get another salesperson. Holy shit. That was, um, interesting. Let's say tried various different people. And it's like, all right, well, I'm on the phone. Dad's on the phone. I'm still, I still have to create and deliver and do all of these other things. I was doing more webinars. I was doing a couple of webinars a week. And I was just like, this is uh, like, again, you know, there's got to be a better way with that voice. Um, and, and in the end, like part of it as well, like my, my infrastructure costs kept increasing. So my, the revenue, the revenue turnover was amazing. We're at a million a year. Um, but what I was keeping of that, you know, you, you know, profits first, right? Um, it was just like, okay, there's got to be a better way than doing all of this. And I think that the challenge here is where, when you, when you've learned something and you know, it works and then you've got, even when you've got this thinking, you know, there's got to be a better way. It's like, how do you kind of like make that transition sometimes between what you've got and what you want? And, and finding the way to transition without loss of momentum, potentially without loss of income, um, and you know, because we come, we become very reliant on our systems and our processes. But for me, it was like, okay, got to be a better way. And so I made some changes, and I decided to learn from a, a, another mentor, as you do, who had this really amazing system, and and it was like I'd been running webinars for years, but there was just some little tweaks. In it. And I'm like, yeah, this works really fucking well. Like it, it cuts my time down. It cut down my time on the phone. It cut down dad's time on the phones. And it started to be, it was just really great, right? Really, really awesome. I was running two live webinars a week and I had tested, and this is where the your way comes in. I had tested running evergreen webinars, right? So this is these are webinars that are put up, and I don't see them very often these days. It looks like they've completely gone out of fashion, thank God. Uh, and I could be wrong though, but where like these webinars would go up, and it's like register for this webinar that's coming up in half an hour, and then if you happen to look at the same ad or the same post like an hour later, it's like log in for this live webinar that's happening in half an hour, and I'm like fuck you guys, you know, right from the get-go, you're lying to your audience. You're saying that this is a, a, a freaking live webinar and it's canned questions, canned comments. Um, you're full of shit. And I was furious. I thought, I am not doing that. Um, I did test 
some recurring webinars where, and I never said they were live, right? I was like, I am not saying that these webinars are live. I was saying, I was saying that this is a, it's a, it's a webinar training that you can log into. It's running at blah, blah, blah time. And I would make sure that I would answer any questions that came through on the chats and things. And I thought that is so far out of integrity. And you know what? Like those, those canned fucking web, evergreen webinars, the conversions were shit. In, for, for mine, um, using the same webinar as what I would use as a live webinar versus a recorded webinar. Um, the live webinars converted like like a motherfucker uh, and, and the recorded webinars were like, I don't know, maybe uh, like they converted potentially at like a tenth, maybe 10% compared to what my live webinars would. So I'm like, mm, yeah, this is really, this is pants, like this is crap. Um, and I could have invested a whole ton of money in boosting up the numbers so that that conversion was fine. But I'm like, why would I do that when I can convert at 50% on a live webinar, right? So it kind of made sense to me to just go and, you know, whilst remaining in integrity and, and do the opposite of what the rest of the industry was doing. And so like that worked really, really well. And what I then though started to realize is like, I'm... When I was delivering the webinars, I started to really notice that my energy was kind of slowing down a little bit. Like I wasn't as excited to run the webinars. I wasn't as excited to promote them. It didn't have the same kind of feeling in it. And they and the conversions went down because this is what happens, right? When, when you're kind of sitting there thinking like, man, this is going to be really fucking hard. And then if you're doing that, you're running. And I mean, I was, I exaggerate, right? But if I'm running a webinar that I don't want to run, talking about things I don't really want to talk about, you know, even though my physiology, you can't really see here, but like my physiology is like, oh, you know, this is what we're going to do. It uh, like that, even though you may not have been able to see me, which actually I, I had my camera on, it, it just, there's, a, there's an energetic transfer and I was not loving it, right? There were things in my business that I was not loving. I wasn't loving the pressure. I wasn't loving the way I was marketing. And I constantly had this little, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. And then there was, right? Come 2018 and, you know, a lot of toing and froing, a lot of experimenting, a lot of trialing and erroring and changing and testing and, you know, all the rest of it. I was like, right, you know, fuck it. I know that there are so many tools out there. I know that there are so many options and believe you me, I, you know, given the industry I'm in and what I do, I've probably tried pretty much freaking everything uh, in order to, to find the way. And instead of looking at the tools and the mechanisms for what it was that I was going to use, I've kind of gone, all right, if I'm going to do this my way, and if I'm going to do this in the way that I like to buy, and if I'm going to do this in the way that I like to build connections, then what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? So I made, I drew the line in the sand and I was like, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. So sales calls out the window with the exception that if I want to talk to someone, like if I'm, if I'm wanting to, if you, if you would have messaged me and say, oh, Nicola, you know, I'm, I'm curious about working with you. Can, you know, can I just talk to you? Cause I'm a bit confused about what to do. You know, no worries at all. Like I'm happy with that. I just don't want to dial 80 people. I don't want to sit on a phone all day, every day, earbuds in, you know, excluding everything else and not being able to do the things that I love as well as connecting with people. So I was like, right, sales calls. I'm like, right, you know what? Webinars. I don't think I want to run webinars twice a week live every week for the foreseeable future, just so I can, um, just, just to make money. It was like, no, I, I mean, and, and educate, but as, as I didn't want to use that as the vehicle all the time. I didn't want to be constrained to that. So it's like, all right, well, if it's my way, what am I doing? What am I choosing? How am I choosing to show up? The beautiful thing that happened is, yeah, revenue went down uh, and that's okay. My expenses also went down because uh, I don't have big team anymore. I've still got a team, but I don't have a big team anymore. I don't have the same minimum spend requirement. I was spending so much money in, in Facebook ads to generate these leads. It was, it was insane um, and great, 
right? And great because I was getting about a 10 times return on investment. So for every dollar I was putting in, I was getting $10 back. So, you know, in that sense, it was like the, the conversions and the ROI and everything like that was there. But the the return on investment on a joy perspective, on a love perspective was like, yeah, nah, I knew that there had to be a better way. And so for me, it was that line in the sand and the, and the decision to really go, okay, this is enough now and I'm going to do it my way. And you know what? If my way doesn't work, then maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I shouldn't actually even have this business. Maybe I shouldn't be, maybe I shouldn't be advocating for what I'm advocating for because I really, I started this business to build freedom. I started this business to have choice. And what I had actually created was a set of really heavy freaking concrete boots that kept me on the phone all day, every day, that kept me in front of a screen all day, every day, uh, that had me the way that I had built the the support, I was available 24-7. And, you know, that's, to me, that's not freedom. You know, that's not, I don't get to exercise much choice in, in those instances. And it sounds like I'm really bagging out my old business or like, I mean, this business, but the way I used to run it and, I, and I'm not, I loved it. But there were elements that I didn't love. And what the, the very wise version of me now, you know, a decade down the track is the, the, the things that you need to do when you're starting out is are important. Hey, Carol. Hey, Joe. You know, there are things that you have to do because you have to experiment. You have to try. You have to work out, well, you know, rather than going in and, and going, okay, nah, not doing sales calls. Okay, well, maybe try them. Or maybe you're like, nah, don't want to do webinars. Okay, but maybe try them. And, and you might find that you actually love doing it or you might find that you hate them. But the, the good thing is, is that you then get to trial. It's like having the, the, the business buffet, right? It's like you get to try this and you're like, well, that tastes awful. I don't want to do that. And man, you know, I had no idea that that was going to be so freaking awesome and I love it. And then you go and do more of that. The good thing though, is that you've got this ability to right now to be able to choose anything that you want to try. And then you can put it back if you don't like it uh, after you've given it a bit of a chance is, is my advice. But the thing that I want to remind you of is that if you've got this thing rolling around in your head where you're like, you know, there's got to be a better way, there probably is. The thing to get there, the way to kind of work out what that better way might be is to decide that this is your way. You are going to do it your way. And and listening to the advice of, of myself and, and perhaps other people that you might follow is really freaking important, but, but you've also got to make decisions and choices that are aligned for you. I, I read a post by a mentor and friend of mine who said that uh, we're sharing some of the, the worst business advice that they'd ever received. And I was like, yep, I agree with that. There is some advice that I took that I ran with and I'm like, man, that was a really shitty piece of advice. And I'm sure, and, and it's not that the advice was bad, right? Uh, it's not that the advice was bad. It was just that the advice was not right for me. So for the things that I talk to you about and the things that I advocate for, you know, I'm going to tell you my opinion. I'm going to tell you what I think. I'm going to share with you what I think that you should do. Your responsibility then has to, and you've got to take radical self-responsibility. Your responsibility then is to go, okay, is this aligned Am I going to take this? And if you're going to take it, freaking take it and run with it and, and jump all in, right? Jump in, both feet, do it, rock it out. And then, okay, maybe that didn't work for me. And that's not necessarily based on the advice. It's it's based on you and, and your circumstance and what you got out of it, right? And this is relevant and true for any mentor that you work with, for any book that you read, you, you've got to go, okay, is this right for me right now? And trust your intuition. Um, and it's also important if you're not sure to then go, okay, well, based on this, then what am I going to do? Um, or you go seek different advice or you give new information so that the advice can change. I had a conversation with a client yesterday and we were talking about this really cool program that she's going to launch and I'm very excited about it. 
And um, one of the things that she, she shared with me, the tagline, and I've gone, oh, wow, you know, I, I probably wouldn't click on that. And so, look, for me, this is my interpretation. This is, a, this is the association that I've got with this word. And so what it was, like we were talking about the word sensitive. Uh, there was a word sensitive in this tagline. I'm like, I, 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 I don't think that I'm, I don't, I don't identify myself as a sensitive type of person. Uh, I have moments where I'm very sensitive and I do feel things. And, and I think um, the more I learn, the more I become self-aware and, and things like that, like the more I feel you guys, right? I, I know my capacity for empathy always uh, is always increasing. And I do think that I'm kind of empathic in different situations, but I don't identify myself with the word sensitive. And I'm going, oh, you know what? I probably wouldn't click on that. But I said, you know what? I'm, I'm probably not your client. You know, you've got to think about the, the people who you've got coming through and what they're going to identify with and what their associations are going to be. Because just because I've got this association doesn't mean that everybody else will. So then we're like, we started expanding in the conversation. I said, what's the rest of the tagline? And then she read out the rest. I'm like, oh, I'd totally click on that. And I'd probably glaze over that bit. I said, but you've got to test it. You've got to go out and see. And just because, you know, my advice to you is to go test, go see what your people are going to uh, resonate with and identify with. Uh, just because that's how it is for me is not how it's going to be for you. So I think the two things that I really want to leave you with today are these. Number one, it gets you get to run your business in the way that you want to run your business. You are the bus driver. You are the train driver. You get to go toot toot where we're often steaming forward or you get to go, you know what, we're just going to sit in the station for a little bit and take a, you know, take a minute to, to breathe and do whatever. Your way or the highway, right? The second piece of advice that I want to give you, and this is relevant for every single one of you, and that is to make your choices and decisions based on alignment, right? And what feels right, uh, what sounds right. And if you're being given advice, take a minute to absorb it, to check in and think, is this the best and the right advice for me? And if the answer is no, have the courage to go back to that person that gave you that advice and say, hey, and, and I won't, like, I, I, I do this, I would expect this of all of my clients. Um, you know, if they, if they come back and say, oh, hey, um, you know, this thing here is, you know, this doesn't kind of, like, I, I just want to talk about this because I'm not quite sure that this fits. You know, if you're, if you're coaching, helping, mentoring, training people, then you've got to be open to helping your people, Right. Lisa, I think I get confused because what I love and the way I do it sometimes just isn't received well by my audience. Um, I love to hear what makes you think that um, and what you mean because to me, you know, I, I know that some of you don't agree with what I say. I know some of you don't like it. I know some of you don't like that I swear. I know that some of you are going to check out and, and unfollow, unlike, whatever. It's not my job to... It's not my job to um, to change my message or to change who I am, the way I am, and how I like to do things to try and please the masses. My job is to show up for that one person at the back of the room who's like, yes, that's what I needed to hear today. And that's the way that I needed to hear it today. And, you know, thank you for saying that. You know, it would be nice to appeal to all of the people. And I do have this uh, deep desire <laughs> to be liked by everyone. Uh, but it's just not reality. You know, if, if anyone is following anything over this last week with the way, with things that are going on in the world and, and Black Lives Matter particularly, it's really polarized a lot of people, right? You know, people are, are in trouble because they're saying things. People are in trouble because they're not saying things. People are in trouble for being advocates. People are in trouble for not being advocates. People are in trouble for not saying things. People are in trouble for saying too much. People, you know, it's just, it's just insane. Um, but it's not insane. It, it, it's just curious right? Um, you know, in terms of what you feel great about and what you're excited to deliver, the um, some, some things just don't convert. I, you guys, like I, I've, I've promoted programs that have made no sales. 
I run launch shows that have made no sales. And and what I choose to believe, the way I choose to frame that, uh, and I can be like, oh my God, this is the best fucking thing ever. I'm going to go hell for leather. Try, I can't think of a name of a program um, that, I, that I've done. Like this year they've, they've worked. Last year there was some that, that just didn't, just didn't convert at all. And I think that the interesting thing for me is like, you know what, if, if I'm going out, oh, um, what was it? I think there was a program I called, called the, the, it was a bit weird, um, the Garden of Earthly Delights, right? And I, and I kind of framed it like this really fun, fabulous expedition through um, you finding your purpose, right? And working out what that was and, and then marketing that and finding your people that would fit in that. And, and I launched it and I ran with it for about 10, 10 or 14 days and I didn't make one sale. I didn't get one inquiry. And I was like, oh my God, I'm dead. Um, I'm dying. This is like stupid shit. Like, I was like, what's wrong with me? Why does nobody like this offer? And in retrospect, what happened was I, I launched that and I, and I promoted the heck out of it. But then the next program that I launched, and I can't remember what that was in, in terms of the sequence, it might've been the amplification project actually. Um, I, I then went, okay, so now I'm going to go and do this and was promoting that. And I made, a, I made heaps of sales into that. It was, it was a really successful launch. But the thing that people don't buy can sometimes prime them for the for the next thing that you offer, right? So they might not they might just go, yeah, that didn't that didn't hit the mark. But then the next thing that you do, they're like, yes, you know, I'm I'm in, I'm in. Um, okay, so I hope that makes sense. And sometimes people just aren't interested, right? It's just you know sometimes what what we think, um, you know, we can get we can get a little bit confused sometimes. I, well, I'll say this for me and I know for my clients as well. Sometimes what can happen is that you're like, I know what the people need, right? I know what you need. And sometimes they, that's not what you want, right? So, and, and this is that thing where it's like, sell them what they want, give them what they need. Um, and, and they're selling them what they want thing can be the thing that they're interested in. And so like capture them with that and then give them what they need when when they're in your course or in your program and, and that type of stuff. Um, hope that helps. Oh, thanks, Jeanette. You're welcome. Uh, Lisa, my business is changing and what I really want to do, my people don't want because it means I have to do the work. Well, uh, were you willing to do the work? Because if you are willing to do the work and your people are a little bit like you, you will find them. Sometimes there's like if as your business changes and evolves, there can be a, a bit of a lag, right? Because people are trying to catch up to, to you and, and where you're going and what you're doing. And 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 they're, they're, if, particularly if they're following you, it can be like, oh, well, this is kind of curious. Like I don't really, I don't really get it. Um, but once you once you're talking about implementation, you're talking about doing the work and you're talking about the payoff for that, then you can get people moving through that way. So your, your people your people are out there in the way that you want to do it. And I think this, what it comes back to, and I guess the third point to leave you with today is that you've got to get into a, you've got to, um, I'd encourage you to get into a place of complete trust and faith that what you want to do, and I know it sounds counterintuitive when the results aren't showing, you know, the evidence that this works for you just yet. The more you can sit in trust and faith that the people will come, it's like that that movie uh, Field of Dreams, you know, if you build it, they will come. And it's like, you've got to come into that. You've got to come back to trust. You've got to come back into faith. And for me, the thing is, well, I'm unwilling to do the things that I don't want to do or in the way I don't want to do them just to make money or just to, to, to um, you know, reach more people. I'm unwilling to do that. I will do it. It's, it's my way or the highway. Um, right. So, Lisa, you've done the work the whole time. It's moving from being a reader to a coach. Right. So, if you've been doing the work the whole time, you know, we're not that unique. I know we like to think we are. And, and sometimes it's like, you know, there's nobody else out there like me. Um, 
And I, I guess the thing is, is that if if I exist and I'm a, you know, I'm an implementer and if you exist and you're an implementer and all of you who are listening, I know that you guys are all doing the work or you want to do the work because you know that what the outcome is going to be is so much better than being where you are right now. So yeah, it, it is, it's the way that you talk to your people. So you've said that rather than being a done for you service, it's a, I can guide you. Absolutely. You know, I can teach you how to do lead generation. I can teach you um, how to market. I can teach you how to do your content. I could actually do it all for you. But if something happened to me and if something happened to my business, you're screwed. Right, so I I will only these days, unless in, in very exceptional circumstances, I will teach you how to fish. I will not do the fishing for you, because I don't want you to be dependent on me. I want you to be completely sovereign. I want you to be completely independent. I want you to be able to do whatever it is that you need to do, and and I guess that's that's you know that that it is a different thing. And and if you've been doing things for people, it is it's just reteaching your audience what your what you're willing to do and what you're unwilling to do, right? And just shifting the narrative and the message a little, but they will come, right? And some people will hang around and some people will go by the wayside, but then that creates the space for more new people to come, okay? So three things today, uh, your way or the highway, you get to do things in the way that you want to do them. Um, I can't remember what the second thing was and, the, and I didn't write it down. And the third thing is get into trust and faith, that the way that you want to build your business and the things that you want to do for your people will happen, right? But you've got to believe it more than anything else, despite whatever evidence might be shown to you in this reality right at this second uh, and, and come at it from that place and just know that your people are out there and it's just, you've just got to be consistent in showing up and doing the things that uh, you need to do. So, that is me for today. That is my sermon. I am going to love you and leave you. If you've got any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, get out there, go help some people, have a whole ton of fun doing it. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you very soon.